Okay, actually, let's do this. I promised you in my last stream that we would be watching an SCP. So I have no knowledge of SCPs, okay? None. And people have been begging me to start getting into the SCP lore of these scientifically contained p pig monsters. I'm sure that's what it stands for. So we're going to be jumping into this one. Uh, the Plague Doctor. This was recommended to be one of my first ones, so let's just jump right into it. Let's see what this SCP is all about. I want to shake in my boots. I want to piss in my diaper. This video features original The stories. esteemed Dr. Thomas Morstead entered the cell of the anomaly. All right, all right. He'd been warned and even right, chastised right. by his colleagues. He's looking cheerful. Nothing's but bad. But who in the foundation could tell him what to do? He was the best at what he did. Maybe the greatest in the whole history of the Foundation. Okay, all right. As he entered the room, SCP-049 bid him welcome, cordial as always. So polite, in fact, that you'd never guess you were talking to a killer. Oh, baby, what a wholesome SCP! Dr. Morstead- I would trust him. Honestly, anyone with, like, those bird mask things? Dude, witch doctors? They can suck my dick if you know what I'm saying. Knew the truth of what he was dealing with. Also believed he could get through to 049. Calm him. Exercise the devil from him. One of them human, one of them part human, part something that has never Ooh. been clear. It was to be a battle of wits, and like so many great battles, this one would turn into a massacre. Oh, Before we get that to that fateful happen. meeting, there are some things you should know about the anomaly known as SCP-049. If you saw him in the street, the first thing you'd think of is playing, because 049 always looked the same. A man okay. dressed in black robes with a Wait, plague is this SCP, like, immortal? Is 049 just living throughout all these generations? Doctor's mask. But this wasn't a costume that could be taken off. In fact, it wasn't a costume at all. What? It was him. Oh, the robes okay. had grown out of him like an exoskeleton. That horrible mask with the pointed nose wasn't covering his face. It, it was, was his, his face. face! A kind of shell okay. that had seemingly sprouted from bone. The first reports came during World War II in a picturesque town in the south of France called Montauban. People. Oh had God, the French! Obviously, obviously. Begun going missing. Children disappeared from their beds in the middle of the night That's and weren't seen again. Adults went to the market and never returned. Ooh. Local authorities searched high and low. They scoured nearby woods and dragged the rivers, but nothing was found. Okay, dude, if this was really France, that he wouldn't have a rifle. Let's be real. Like, come on, bro. He'd be going with a fencing sword trying to find him. Because what was happening wasn't criminal. There was no clue they could stumble upon or eyewitness who would break the case. What are we saying, dude? This wasn't criminal. Yes, there were many kidnapped children, but listen, this wasn't criminal. No, this was something else. Something that the townsfolk could never understand. Word spread. And that's when a search and discovery team was sent from the Foundation. It was a cold, dark night in January of 1941 when the team found what they were looking for. They walked through the open door oh, of a small house located not too far from the Grand Chateau de Richelieu to find a masked man sitting next to an open fire. And he wasn't alone. So that's the how floor they first around him found the plague doctor. Like it was moving. Upon closer inspection, the team oh, saw shit. that the floor was covered with writhing, grasping bodies. Ooh. They it's don't look too good. This man broke his ass. Ladies and gentlemen, next time you see someone with a broken ass, you'll think of this man. As it called them. Bienvenue chez moi. <laughs> he speaks French. Bienvenue. Them, I think. Welcome to my home. Those so-called patients crawled towards the team, intent it seemed to cause harm. The hostiles, now known as- <laughs> Okay, all right. So I love how when it showed French people walking in the woods, they're carrying rifles, like hunting rifles. And then you have the SCP guys in the woods with assault rifles. Nice. SCP-049-2s were deemed dangerous and had to be eliminated. A sight, it seemed, that didn't bother 049 in the slightest. Oh, it just God. sat there, occasionally looking up from writing notes in a leather-bound book as his patients were gunned down. Oh Once my the God, ended, they murdered all his patients? That's a little dark, okay. It simply closed its book, stood up, and allowed itself to be escorted away. What, it lets itself get arrested? That's even creepier. Whenever you tell me a story of like some villain or whatever, and the villain, he's so bad, and he's escaping law enforcement for years, and, and all this crazy shit's happening, and they finally get him, 
It's like, all right, whatever. But when you actually hear let themselves get arrested, it's like, oh, brother, this man is bad news. And that's it's like the Kaido lets himself get captured by the world government. It's like, he is no mere pirate. Story of how 049 ended up at the facility, becoming a guest of sorts, staying in a standard secure humanoid containment cell, Research Sector 02, Site 19. The few that came into contact with 049 remarked that it was a pleasure for them, with its oh. impeccable manners, vast knowledge of what medicine and human anatomy, sharp tongue, and stinging wit. They almost became spellbound listening to it, caught in the throes of its charms until, with the simple touch oh, of its hand, geez. it would drain the life from them. That it's a succubus without the tits. This is the biggest cuck I've ever seen in my life. What a goddamn sad way to go. If you're gonna get the life sucked out to you, at least let it be with a succubus. That's why SCP-049 was classified as a Euclid. That's why armed guards were always stationed outside its cell. What the hell is a Euclid? It's why doctors took great precautions when in its presence, huh. and it's why Dr. Morstead should have known better. Remember, Dr. Morstead, when 049 you are a fucking idiot. Nine was discovered in- Succubus is a different SCP? Oh shit. France, it willingly went with the team, like it was happy it had been found as if it had planned its own capture. Oh, when it God. arrived at the facility, it didn't act like it was contained against its will. It was like it was returning home. Oh, God. Initial findings as to the biology of That's 049 terrifying. were that it didn't require any sustenance at all, not even water. It seemed content to be left alone with its notebooks. It did not object when it was asked if it could share some of its notes and gladly handed over its journals. But upon examination, it was discovered that they were written in the language that no linguist or cryptologist has so far been able to translate. That's wild. So let me get this straight. You got this guy, this monster, kidnapping children and poisoning them for research purposes. And it lets itself get caught. It lets itself get uh, arrested. And it just sits there, fully content, the entire time, for years after years after years, not needing food or drink. This is terrifying. Oh my god. Euclid means it needs m more resources than containment because it's friendly! It's wholesome! He doesn't poison them, he turns them into zombies? That's scary. It's apparent that 049 derives much satisfaction Ooh. from seeing so-called experts struggle over its text. Unable to read those notes, a long line of doctors visited 049 in its cell, each fascinated by what they beheld. It was learned so that it has traveled the globe. Smart. It speaks many languages, but prefers to speak what it calls Les Langues de l'Amour, French. It asked for only one thing, warm-blooded animals. Oh. The facility agreed to supply 049 with various kinds, including rabbits, cattle, and even an ape on one occasion. Okay. Just like with humans, it could kill the animals with a mere touch of its hand. Bro, sucking... every single video I'm watching, Sea Dog VA is catching strays. I cannot believe it. The life right out of them. But that wasn't even the most incredible part. No, Soon incredible. those animals would rise again, as if reanimated by 049. Oh shit, he makes zombies. They would become, for all intents and purposes, the living dead. Oh and God. they were hostile. After several unfortunate incidents, they were taken from the cell the moment they arose and disposed of in the incinerator. This was not to the liking of 049, who would claim it had cured the animals. For it, the world was sick. Oh my god, so hold up. So 049 is actually kind of twisted good guy in a way? Like he just wants to cure the world of diseases? Look at us, we, we're full of diseases, we're full of rage, we're full of, we, we have cancer, we have other untreatable illness, illnesses, all right? We also have wars, we have fights, we have racism, we have all sorts of really crazy issues in society, but all that would be gone if it simply cured us. Ah! It saw plague and pestilence everywhere, and the meaning of its existence was to rid the world of disease. Humans, it said, contained a virus oh and had to be cleansed. In the first days after arriving at the facility, 049 didn't seem to pose a threat to humans. It was quite friendly, in fact. It seemed aware of the fear it caused in staff and would often go out of its way to make them feel comfortable and safe. This was a ruse, Oh my course, god, he's not, so smart! As nine liked to say. It had no intention to help humans. Hmm. No. It had come for humans. It had come! Maybe it is a succubus. It wasn't trapped. It had set a trap. Oh 
One of the first people to truly upset 049 was Dr. Raymond Hamm, a well-respected physician that had twice been a contender for the Nobel Prize for his more mainstream work. What had confused Dr. Hamm the most was not 049's clothes-like exoskeleton, or even his ability to reanimate the dead, but the bag that it used. No, I, I would... I would still go as far as to say that reanimating the dead is the, is the creepiest part. I'm not gonna lie. I would go as far as to say that reanimating the dead way creepier than his backpack. 049 was somehow able to pull a seemingly endless supply of surgical tools from that bag. Sometimes it would even pull out objects that were somehow <laughs> larger than the bag itself. It was as if the bag connected to somewhere else. Oh. And that's what Dr. Ham wanted to talk about on that fateful day. With 049 on one side of the cell and Dr. Ham on the other, he asked, how is it that you can produce a great quantity of tools from that bag? I've observed you, and it seems to me that you are doing the impossible. I, I love how they're not even questioning the fact that he's reanimating people from the dead, and they're just like, that bag of yours! Dear doctor, replied 049, the scourge, the great dying, cannot be fought with a handful of toys. My bag is merely the product of my imagination. It gives me what I require. You, dear sir, it seems, are limited by your imagination. Okay. It stopped for a second or two All and right. stared at Dr. Dark. Ham. I detect you are unwell, it said, in a voice not as amiable as before. It's just a cold, said the doctor. Uh -oh. Ah, just a cold. I can cure you. If you had you. seen what I have seen, you would not utter such insulting words. Dr. Ham pulled out some papers from a briefcase and approached 049, holding them close enough so it could read them. You see, said Dr. Ham, oh, pointing God. to the results on the paper. Those animals you say you cured, they were not diseased. They were perfectly healthy before they died. And your so-called cure, it turned them into something quite terrible. We found that if they were not alone, they began to kill each other. <laughs> This dude's about to become a zombie. And then themselves. 049 did not respond. And after a brief pause said only, A good day to you, doctor. Please close the door on your way out. You should get some rest. He just Ham offended a plague doctor. And instead turned the conversation to this real interest. The bag. Demanding that 049 let him see inside of it. Very well, doctor. 049 said. Oh. In private. 049 began to pull a series of long metal poles out of its bag. Followed by a rolled up curtain that it hung between them. <laughs> I'll show you in private. No, no, don't trust him. Don't trust him. No. Creating a kind of medical tent around Dr. Ham. It seemed to stare for just a moment into the observation camera outside of itself before whipping the curtain shut. Dr. Ham was discovered three hours later, crawling around the floor of 049's <gasps> cell, now another mindless undead. When he was retrieved Brother. by security, 049 didn't even look up from his notebook. Dr. That Ham is didn't get- scary! Oh my god! It all happens and he's just calmly sitting there scribbling in his notebook while they take an undead man out of the room holy shit the incinerator treatment but he did receive a fatal dose of drugs a mercy a removal team was sent to 049 cell but it had said there was no need for special extraction techniques it would go willingly wherever they wanted to go it was not it said an enemy of the people the hippocratic Damn. oath forbids me to hurt a human being it said while walking to the interrogation center. My only desire is to offer you my services and expertise. Bro, it's like a really twisted, um... I will cure the world! Person walls of the interrogation center. he's just so center. stoic about it. It just makes him so scary. Room were painted a bright white. Even the table was white, which contrasted with 049, a mass of black sitting in the middle of the room. During the interrogation, it refused to admit or even accept that it had killed Dr. Ham. No, he cured him. He didn't kill him. He cured him. I cured him. I re ah! removed the pestilence from his body, it said. It was later asked if it regretted its actions, to which it replied, Well, good sir, one always regrets the loss of a colleague for any reason, but I stand by my actions. The pestilence must be abated before it is too late. Every two Damn, weeks from that point, 049 was given animals. Why? The scientists at the facility observed it time and again, touching the animals, killing them, before producing a saw or a scalpel and opening them up. Organs would be carefully- Why would you do this? You know what he's doing! He's killing them and bringing them back to life, turning them into zombies, and then just give them an endless supply of cows and dogs just to, to experiment on. Listen, I'm no PETA supporter, but this is evil! Moved with perfect precision. It was astounding to even train surgeons just how talented uh -huh. 049 was. I require a close relative of yours, said 049 what? one day to a young doctor, who expressed shock that it was asked for one of the doctor's family members. What? No 
Oh, dude, don't do it. No, don't do it, bro. I mean a great A, said oh. Zero. Okay, that's a lot better. All right, okay. Four nine. Not your dear aunt. There were several instances of 049 displaying a crude sense of humor. Staff Depending on the SCP, they supply children? Oh my god, who are the bad guys? These monsters being confined or the freaking containment service? Would almost forget that the thing that they were talking to wasn't human. Almost. And it was Dr. Thomas Morstead that had supplied the great apes. Orangutans, in fact. That had been rescued Those are gorillas, not orangutans, but okay. from the rainforests of Borneo, only to be taken to 049 South. Then one day something changed. 049 told Dr. Morstead that its work was done, that it accomplished what it had wanted to do, what? and could someone remove the cured animal from its cell? I think you'd find that it's quite the work of art. A trial, oh, God. 049 uh -huh. said through the oh, God. When the removal team oh, entered no. the cell, they found no. the orangutan, or what was left of it. It was lying in the corner oh. of the cell. The top of its skull had been removed, leaving Ooh. its brain exposed. On its face was the expression of relaxation, and from its mouth it issued very soft squeaks. What? Like that of an infant. 049 said, Tell Dr. Morstead that its rage mechanism no longer exists. I've removed the amygdala and made some changes oh to the hypothalamus God. and limbic system. Big, big brother Ed. Ah! <laughs> oh my God. It is cured and quite harmless. The next day, Dr. Morstead announced that he wanted to visit 049's cell himself, after which he heard a chorus of disapproval from his colleagues, all telling him that 049 was now too dangerous. Dr. Ham was sick, replied Morstead, and 049 has assured us that he would never take another human life. He's never lied to us, and I'm going to take him at his word. It but yeah, but he doesn't consider that killing. He considers this curing. It appeared that 049 had created the perfect specimen, so what was next? Dr. Morstead had to know. Oh Everyone God. is sick, 049 told Dr. Morstead after the two had talked for a couple of minutes. The great pandemic has started. Fear not. Oh my God, it's COVID too. Doctor, I have a cure. No longer will you humans spread your disease. I'm afraid you are wrong, replied the doctor. This pandemic you speak of does not exist. We can happily live with our pathogens. We have done so for millennia. Dr. Morstead became angry that he couldn't get through to 049. I'm afraid you are suffering from paranoia. It is you who need to be cured. You have no idea, said 049. Run, bro! Get the hell out of there, please! Get out of there, brother! What are you doing? shouted Morstead. You promised you wouldn't hurt a human again. I'm not hurting you. I'm, he I'm healing you. My God! 049 said and leapt across- Guys, did you know that 100% of humans that breathe oxygen literally die? Thanks, Seth, for these wonderful insights. ...the room in a flash, placing a hand on the doctor's head. Morstead slumped to the ground. They were being watched in the observation room, and this had gone too far. He had to be moved to the containment cells, permanently. Mobile Task Force Epsilon 11 was right Or you could just not send people in there, I guess. ...the scene and burst through the door. No imagination, 049 said to himself. Those humans have no imagination at all. He began walking towards the task force who opened fire on the anomaly, okay. but the bullets bounced off its black coat. And oh my SCP-049 calmly touched each of the members of the task force one by one, draining the life from them. That the last scary. one standing stopped firing and attempted to run, but again 049 leapt across the room, black cape billowing out behind him and gently touched the man, oh causing him God, to drop bro. to the floor. Zero four Dude, this is nightmarish. Or nine stepped over the bodies of the fallen team and walked out of the containment cell. The full details of what happened next are available only to the O5 Council, what are sometimes called the Overseers. The redacted report that is available reads, Standard Secure Humanoid Containment Cell, Research Sector 02, Site 19, Subject, right. SCP-049, Date of Breach, Redacted. Euclid class SCP-049 breach cell and subsequently gained access to adjoining rooms and nearby buildings. Okay. Breach lasted approximately three days and five hours. Right. Total casualties so redacted, with redacted number of survivors requiring incineration therapy. Incineration Course therapy! Survivors that they had to murder. Action. Department of Science Alchemy Division suggested injecting anti-transmogrify disinfectant into Class D former prisoners who were transported to site and allowed them to come into contact with SCP-049. SCP failed to reanimate injected prisoners and cure them. SCP-049 acknowledged this failure and surrendered to Mobile Task Force Alpha-1. 
SCP-049 then requested to be contained. Present containment under responsibility of Redacted, Redacted. Present location of SCP-049, Redacted. Damn, End brother. of report. So that's what happened to the plague, Doctor. That is actually terrifying. That's some really good writing. If you want to see existential dread SCPs, look at 2718. 7179 or 7601. Oh god, there's so many options. The SCP strip club. Maybe next time. 10,000 likes and I'll do another SCP. Okay, that's it. The end. I will do another one. 10,000 likes. That's it. We do one at a time. So I was told to watch this one. Comment below which is the next SCP you want me to dive into and also 10,000 likes for me to watch another one immediately. Let's get into it. I want to be scared. I want to be shook. I want to be spooked. This won't scare me, don't worry. On March 15th, 2011, uh, Martin Sims was wandering down the streets of Carson. Dude, what the fuck is this? Huh? What, what, what's this? This man have a nipple coming out of his chest? It's like the size of his chest. California. His clothes were ragged. He was oh. filthy. And oh, that's his shoulder. Okay. <laughs> okay, all right. Wearing like a madman with a full beard and long, unkempt hair. His body was covered in scars, okay. but he showed no signs of malnutrition. What made Martin's sudden appearance so remarkable? He'd been missing for three years. Okay, that's definitely scary, I guess. Okay. When he was interviewed by police, they asked him where he'd been all this time. They couldn't believe his answer. He'd been trapped in an Ikea said What? What? It's 2008, but this was no ordinary Ikea. This was a dangerous anomaly that would come to be known as SCP-3008. Oh my god, how many of these SCPs are there? That's crazy. Martin's strange answers in his interview were laughed off by his interviewing <laughs> officers, who assumed he was either crazy or under the influence of something. But they caught the attention of a- <laughs> Women! <laughs> SCP Foundation field agent embedded in the precinct. The report was passed up the chain to a local site director who approved a detachment of Foundation field operatives to look into Martin's case. While he was reluctant to lead the Foundation agents back to the offending IKEA, the Foundation can be extremely persuasive. His screams of, please, I'm begging you, don't take me back, don't Wait, so, make me go back. So this SCP Foundation, they're not good, right? Like they're they're actually kind of kind of bad people sort of right like they ultimately disregard dude i don't know why i'm learning about scp like i i i can't sleep as it is when the scp foundation had triangulated the position of scp 3008 oh, which God. was indeed an active ikea the entire retail zone was closed and barricaded under the wait is the ikea the SCP, like tense of a severe black mold infestation. Armed Foundation personnel also arrived on the site shortly after, based on Martin's vague state. Dude, this is the lowest cut top I've ever seen in like a family animation. Statements that there were creatures like, of dude, some. She has nothing on her chest. They got Fifi to freaking act as the field officer here. Due to his deteriorating mental health, Martin was unable to provide a great deal of lucid information on the specific traits of SCP-3008. But one phrase he kept repeating was, bigger on the inside. What? Once researchers were satisfied that Martin had delivered- I'm also bigger on the inside if you know what I'm saying. Delivered all the pertinent information he was able to, he was administered foundation amnestics to erase his memory of the last three years and return to his family. A cover story was okay. formulated. All Martin right. had been kidnapped and abused for three years by a mentally unbalanced stalker in downtown Carson. Is that really that much better? Isn't that really better though? Like for his own mental health sake, like re okay. He'd been able to escape yes. as said oh, stalker shit. took his own life out of guilt. A <laughs> All right, that's a good cover story, sure. Decide that the foundation expertly fabricated mm -hmm. to make their cover story airtight. With the loose end of Martin mm -hmm. Sims taken care of, the true observation of SCP-3008 could uh -huh. begin. A base set around the perimeter of the mysterious IKEA kept a 24-hour watch on the building, covering all potential entrances and exits. Okay. No exploratory missions had yet been approved mm -hmm. by the Foundation Ethics okay. Committee, so they first wanted to perform a- Dude, I'm getting creeped out here, man. Oh, man, I don't like this SCP stuff. Why do I convince you to let me watch scary? things, man. Week of external observation to see if any of the store's anomalous properties extended beyond the confines of the building. After a week of nothing, it appeared they did not. A local site director approved of the use of 20 disposable Class D personnel to explore the interior. Disposable Class D personnel? What the fuck? Interior of SCP-3008. The D-Class operatives would be split into four squads of five men: Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta Squad. Each would be assigned a different quadrant of the store and would deliver information back to the control team on site via a live audio and video link. Three of the four teams upon entering the store reported nothing out of the ordinary. Okay. Neither the audio or video they were sending back indicated anything different. I mean, to be fair, IKEA is kind of terrifying 
Anyway, like, I'm not that guy, dude. Andrew Tate he makes a lot of terrible points. I'm just saying, man makes a lot of bad points. However, he has one really good point. I went to Ikea about three years ago, and I genuinely think it was one of the most depressing experiences of my yeah, life. Yeah, that place fucking I sucks. saw full-grown men. It's so busy and shit, too. I oh, saw, and it's a maze. I saw full-grown men on a Sunday morning walking around. How about the Ikea hot dogs, though? Uh, they're all right. They're pretty good. <laughs> but the sadness, the sadness in the eyes of the full-grown man on a Real. Sunday morning walking around, and his wife is, like, picking up a towel. You want this towel or this towel? And you can see he doesn't give a solitary fuck. So it's his only so day off. It's show. his only day off. It's He's sad. been working for six so days. <laughs> and she's like, we need to go Ikea, Steve. He's like, oh, right. man, can't we not go? We need towels, right Steve. Now. He's like, oh, maybe I might get laid next month if I go Ikea. And he's standing there. And she's like, <laughs> which towel, Steve? And he's a guy like carrying the baby. Oh, I, I don't know. Which one do you like, babe? I'm like, oh, this whole place is just depressing me. I can't get out. It's a maze. And everyone's so real. He, he was trapped in Ikea. Andrew. Tate was a victim of this freaking listen man may have freaking I don't know sex trafficked or whatever but he's so right for this IKEA store from the flat pack wardrobes to the Swedish meatballs team Delta however suddenly began experiencing a scrambled audio and video connection shortly after communication with team Delta dropped off entirely uh -oh. they disappeared somewhere inside the store and uh -oh. haven't been seen since uh -oh. with one notable exception after the disappearance and the extraction of teams foundation researchers classified SCP 3008 as Euclid because its anomalous Euclid. properties were at least confined to the interior of the store Wait, so so exactly what are the classes again you mentioned euclids are like the middle level right the keter ones are the worst right am i is that right i'm trying to figure this out here i'm get, going down this scp rabbit hole and even then seemingly not the entire interior the anomalous area within scp 3008 became known as scp 3008-1 and containment appeared to be 100 percent secure there was no telling how many people had already gone missing in the store over the oh years but the disappearances must be stopped the foundation maintained constant surveillance around the perimeter of SCP-3008, but it appeared they could prevent any further incidents by simply preventing other civilians from accessing the IKEA store. All Martin's right. ravings about monsters were assumed to just be the product of delirium, until a surviving member of Delta Team suddenly reappeared. The date was oh November 3rd, god. 2011. It was oh god, it doesn't stop. Dude, you'd think you could just so guard the freaking store and nothing would happen. Oh, you fool. The cold night, a few hours after what would have been closing time if the store were still active and seven months after the extraction teams had disappeared somewhere in the confines of SCP-3008. There had been no anomalous activity outside the store since the perimeter was first secured, and the Foundation researchers hadn't expected that to change. Can't they just bomb the store? Just eliminate it. Like, dude, stuff is happening in there that we don't like. Bye-bye. Just buy freaking buy. Get rid of it. Eradicate it. Till the last surviving member of Delta Team came barging out of the store's entrance. Startled field operatives were amazed to see him again, but they were even more amazed to see what was following him out of the store, repeating the same... What? What the frick is that? Same phrase. The store is now closed. Please exit the building. Despite the fact that the entity chasing uh, the Delta Team survivor was wearing the yellow shirt and blue pants of an IKEA store employee, oh the being definitely was not human. It oh was God! Wait, so the monster isn't the store, it's what's in the store. Around seven feet tall with no visible face, the entity had grossly extended limbs, with each arm being around five or six feet long and oh ending God. in a huge oversized hand. The whole process was so That's sudden terrifying. that the field agents present at the perimeter weren't able to save the Delta Team survivor as the entity reached forward with his freakishly long arms, grabbed him and twisted his head off like a child with a doll. God, dude, Slenderman out here working in Ikea and no one is having it. That is scary as shit. The field operatives present drew their weapons and peppered the entity with bullets. It would later be classified as SCP-3008-2. The being appeared to collapse and die from the physical oh, trauma, at go. which point it and the body of the former Delta Team Easy, easy. Gun is super effective. Survivor Love were that. taken for an autopsy That's by Foundation dub, researchers. There were no biological abnormalities of the body of the Delta Team survivor so it did not appear that the anomalous properties of SCP-3008-1 had any effect on the physiology of its occupants. He was not malnourished despite being missing for months, oh, and the pregnant. contents of his stomach looked oh, to be half-digested food consistent with the menu of a typical IKEA store restaurant. SCP-3008-2, on the other hand, raised a number of perplexities.
perplexing biological questions. The autopsy revealed that the creature's clothes were actually part of its body, like an additional layer of skin. The creature lacked blood or any kind of vascular system. Even stranger, the entity didn't appear to have bones or internal organs, not even a brain or nervous system. It was a being made entirely of skin all the way to its core. How it would That is rough. Oof, man is just pure flesh. He's a clay man. Dude is just a golem. Is able to move or even live for that matter remains a mystery. Though when you work for the SCP Foundation, you learn to accept that some things will always remain unexplained. One thing was certain though, Martin Sims was right about his monsters. After the incident with Delta Team, the Foundation deemed that sending manned explorations into the heart of SCP-3008 was too much of a liability. Uh, yep. and close off the store, nuke it, get rid of it. We don't want this anymore, no sir, no sir. The series of drone-based reconnaissance missions into the anomaly. The first oh. of these drones. Bro, why did they do that before? Just send the freaking drones. Drones so experienced real. connection issues and failed when attempting to venture wow, into the IKEA's mind. anomalous zone. However, after a lengthy period of trial and error, the Foundation was able to establish a more secure connection with its drones, even when deep into the SCP-3008-1 anomalous zone. It was only then that some of the most extraordinary discoveries were made. SCP-3008-1 seemed to break oh the laws of spatial reality, as the area uh, of the I- Dude, there is nothing scarier than like reality warping foreskin puppets. I'm um, just putting that out there. Kia's interior was at least an order of magnitude larger than its exterior. Just as Martin Sims had said, it These are trapped in Ikea. They walk into an Ikea that's like a normal size. And I inside it's bigger! Yo, that's what he was saying the whole time. Inside is bigger, just like me. It was bigger on the inside, but, yeah. but just how much bigger? The Foundation has yet to find evidence of any physical terminators within the store that might indicate SCP-3008-1 has an end point. While an area of at least 10 kilometers squared has been uncovered in SCP-3008-1, it could in theory be infinite. So it's an infinite IKEA. It's an endless and infinite IKEA. That's actually kind of badass. That's a really cool concept. Laser rangefinder tests, which are normally very reliable, have only given inconclusive results. Interestingly, the anomalous area doesn't have any clear visual differences from the rest of the IKEA store, except that it extends forever. So and this is the first back rooms. IKEA is the first back rooms. Oh god. That's kind of terrifying. Just going and seeing like poor quality bookshelves and pots and pans. Individual trapped anything. within the confines of SCP-3008-1 wouldn't even realize they've entered an anomalous zone until they tried to locate an exit and leave, at which point they'd find they were already hopelessly lost. The geography of SCP-3008-1 does at least appear to be consistent, so people trapped within are theoretically able to retrace their steps and escape if they haven't already ventured too deep. According to data collected during the drone reconnaissance missions, SCP-3008-2, of which there appear to be a vast population- Dude, there's a lot of these just IKEA foreskin puppets. Would wander the stores aimlessly during the day. They are unresponsive to the drone's presence and did not appear to be aggressive. While the physical descriptions of these creatures could vary slightly, they all follow the same overall trend. Clothes, consistent with an IKEA uniform, no face, either seemingly too tall- I love how this is just- Subtly calling out IKEA workers is just flesh puppets that do nothing with their lives. Like, this is actually so sad. Like, imagine working in IKEA and you watch this video and you're like, oh shit. That, that's me. ...or too short, and limbs that are grossly out of proportion with their bodies. As the Foundation began sending drones deeper into SCP-3008-1, they found another incredible discovery. There was an unknown population of humans trapped inside what? IKEA's anomalous zone, and these people had used the IKEA furniture around them to create entire settlements and towns within the store. Oh my god! It's an infinite IKEA, so people literally don't leave. Bro! That's crazy. There's infinite space in there. It's just free real estate. There were several of these towns, all of which seemed to cohabitate peacefully. Even Foundation personnel found this development in their research. Dude, that's actually so bad as holy shit. I mean, they can't leave, but why leave? To be truly extraordinary. Since SCP-3008 was first identified, there have been only 14 civilian she got a real dumpy on her. escapes. Some had been trapped inside for months. Others had been in there for years, some far longer than Martin's three-year stint. While every one of these escapees has eventually been released back to their home, after a liberal application of amnestics and a proper cover story has been devised, the Foundation interviewed each of them extensively first. According to each of these escapees, the people trapped inside the IKEA have built an entirely new society across- There's a society of people trapped in an ecosystem. They're trapped, there's no escape, they will die. 
They will die and accomplish nothing in their lives. Their lives will not actually amount to anything other than just contributing to a society in an Ikea. That's so scary. Across the various settlements, contrary to the Lord of the Flies' expectations of a group of people isolated and afraid, there's immense cooperation between the trapped civilians. The food in the several Ikea restaurants in SCP-3008-1 mysteriously replenishes while- It's an infinite Ikea, so it'll have infinite food. Nobody's there, so there's no threat of starving. And the automatic turning on and off of the lights forms as a rudimentary kind of day and night cycle. That's so wild. Oh my god. They would all die of, like, vitamin D deficiency. Though. Nighttime, however, is when things get dangerous, as the SCP-3008-2 entities, which are known to the people inside as the staff, become extremely hostile after- The staff? Dude, this is just the last of us! This is the last of us just taking place in an infinite Ikea! Dark. Aggressive hordes of the staff swarm the settlements at night, repeating, this door is now closed, please exit the building. The civilians inside are usually able to repel these attacks with minimal casualties, but the constant war of attrition slowly wears down those inside. The bodies of the creatures also need to be removed from the area after each attack, as the presence of corpses or even parts of corpses has been known to heighten the ferocity of the next night's attack. During the day, the staff return to a docile and unresponsive state, though they'll still defend themselves violently if anyone dares to attack. Over the course of the interviews with the This is actually insane how much thought went into this. Oh my god, dude. 14 escapees, Foundation researchers were able to answer another of their key questions. How had so many people gone missing in the store for so long without being noticed? But the answer they received only raised many more unsettling queries. According to the escape This is this is true horror, by the way. This is like a mind warping psychological horror. This is so much scarier, in my opinion, than the Plague Doctor one that I saw before. Uh, like, the Plague Doctor obviously wanted to cure humanity and, and ended up curing humanity in its own way by killing people and shit like that. But these guys, this, this is like Black Mirror horror. This is an endless horror. Gapies, there were people inside the settlements that, despite being otherwise of entirely sound mind and standard intelligence, seemed to lack very common knowledge that even a child should know. For example, some of them weren't aware of the International Space Station orbiting the Earth, or stranger still, the existence of the Statue of Liberty. This what? led the researchers to a frightening conclusion. SCP-3008-1 may not only be a nexus point of multiple IKEA stores in our dimension, it could be connected to IKEAs in every dimension where IKEAs exist. While it only abducts- Oh my god, that is scary. This IP- this opens like so many questions into the lore of the world. The Ikea-verse. Step aside, Spider-verse. A new master of the multiverse has arrived. It's a handful of people from each store over an extended period of time. It suddenly becomes clear how this SCP was able to trap so many people without detection over such a long period of time, which in turn led to an even more terrifying revelation. The SCP Foundation may not have SCP-3008-1 as contained as they thought. Definitely not, because who knows what stores just can suck people into this infinite Ikea. It might even be tucked away in an Ikea store somewhere near you just waiting for you to visit. After all, there's always room for one more. Bro, because, dude, this could suck you in anywhere. You could be anywhere in any IKEA store. This is impossible to contain. That was a good one. That was a spooky one. I like that one a lot. Damn. Well, 10,000 likes and I'll do another uh, SCP. And definitely let me know future stuff you want me to watch. I am going to go and not go to any IKEA ever. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A lot of people have been telling me to watch specifically SCP-682. The SCP Foundation tried to kill the hard to destroy reptile. So this is the one that people have constantly and consistently been telling me I had to see. You have to see 682. Hard to destroy reptile. He's the best one. And since I am finally delving slightly into the SCP Foundation, I very much want to see what this one's all about because everyone keeps telling me about this one so we're jumping into it the hard to destroy reptile scp 682 must be destroyed as soon as possible so begins oh, the scp Wait, they don't try to contain them i thought the whole scp thing is all about containing these anomalies not actually destroying them foundation file on the dreaded scp 682 a highly intelligent reptilian monster that has despite the foundation's best efforts proved impossible to kill. Oh. It may not be the most dangerous SCP out there, okay. considering that some are capable of eliminating entire realities. What the frick? There are SCPs capable of eliminating realities? But it's one of the most iconic 
and you've probably heard tales of the monster that death forgot, and you know exactly why everyone is so afraid of the so-called hard-to-kill reptile. I don't it's go been subjected to some of the most deadly weapons and traps the Foundation could devise, and survived attacks from some of its deadliest fellow SCPs. But before we tell you about the Foundation's many failed assassination attempts against the so-called hard-to-kill reptile, we need a little more groundwork on what this creature even is. Yeah, the first I would, thing to I would know appreciate about that, because right now it doesn't seem dangerous. It's just some guy that can't die, so who cares if he can't die? SCP-682 is that this thing wants you and everything you know dead. I take it all back. Everything I said was completely wrong. I regret all of my decisions until this point. Time to unlock the Logan Paul apology. Unlike some other creatures like SCP-096 and SCP-173, which are murderous but exhibit no real higher processing skills, SCP-682 possesses cunning, advanced reasoning, and even human-level logical intelligence. What? SCP-682 can engage you in conversation, but just talking to the creature calmly and cordially will sometimes cause it to enter its rage state. What? Okay, so obviously this thing is mega dangerous but i still don't see why we can't just take it and lock it up you don't need to kill it this seems like a relatively unthreatening scp for to be one of the most popular it becomes even more dangerous and volatile the beast is perpetually kept in a tank of powerful hydrochloric acid melting its tissue what? to prevent it from reaching its full potential and oh my god they keep it in hydrochloric acid it keeps breaching containment? Oh. Going on a rampage. The creature's most terrifying asset, and the reason it's proven impossible to terminate thus far, is its incredible adaptability to any and all external stimuli. 682 is a reactive being, capable oh. of not only surviving and regenerating from all attacks, but often incorporating those attacks into its own wide arsenal. Damn, so this guy is just Mark Zuckerberg in his true form. In other words, if you're hoping to kill this thing, you better kill it on the first hit. Because if you don't, you better believe it's going to hit you back a hundred times harder. That's insane. This brings us... That's... Th okay, that is actually very terrifying suddenly. You can't just keep it in a stasis if it's something so volatile that... Whew. It's just mirror force. To the main event, some of the SCP Foundation's most ambitious and frightening attempts to terminate SCP-682, or even understand how it could theoretically be terminated. There are quite literally too many unsuccessful attempts for us to list them all here, so think of this as a highlight reel of the Foundation's most prominent failures. 682 was tested with SCP-017, a humanoid shadow entity shown to be able to consume matter with its shadows and leave no traces behind. Oh, Tests on tissue samples from 682 showed that SCP-017 was able to consume said tissues with no adverse effects. However, okay. when SCP-017 was placed into the containment chamber, so this should just be able to consume lizard guy, no problem. Where with the actual creature, 682 let out a horrific roar that was so loud it damaged nearby audio equipment. SCP-017 fled to the corner of the room, and 682, in its rage state, attempted to breach containment. Agents okay. managed. Okay, all right. So that's why this is a threat, because this is this adapts to even like a Kamui, all right. He's going up against literally Kamui from Naruto, and he can get out of there. To suppress and remove the creature, but no meaningful damage was logged. Attempt failed. SCP-173, the killer statue, was later brought in, hoping that its thus far impeccable track record for killing would hold strong. Okay. The second that 173 was introduced into the testing area, 682 retreated to the far wall and began screeching intensely. It was intelligent enough to know what it was dealing with here. While the researchers did an instantaneous reaction, there was actually a stalemate for over six hours as 682 stared at 173 continuously. Eventually, the tie was broken when agents shot out 682's eyes with high-caliber sniper rifles, breaking the line of sight and causing 173 to attack. Wait, Those so 173's weakness is that on uh, in a staring contest, it can't move? So it's so it, so SCPs really have like this really deep lore of all these different creatures with different strengths and weaknesses. And the lizard somehow knew that staring into its eyes would work. That's scary. That's scary. 682 sustained damage to several parts of its body. While its eyes regenerated, the creature was not killed. It then regenerated a number of eyes all over its body, covered in a clear armored carapace that made them resistant to bullets. Oh the stalemate God. continued for an additional 12 hours as 682 maintained oh. perpetual eye contact. 
173 was eventually removed from the containment unit, and the mission was aborted. Attempt failed. Bro, this thing, you just can't get rid of it! In their desperation, the SCP Foundation restored to bringing in another dangerous and seemingly unkillable monster to take on- Statues like the Weeping Angels, and you stare at it. On 682. SCP-096, <laughs> also known as the Shy Guy. As I heard of this guy also. This was also one of the biggest recommendations for me to watch, the Shy Guy. Astute SCP fans will already know, this being kills anything that sees its face, with no known exceptions. And when it enters its attack mode, it's thought to be quite literally unstoppable. Okay, all right, so you just simply- Wait, don't tell me the lizard's gonna be smart enough to not watch this guy's face. The lizard's gonna be so smart he doesn't look at the face. Or at least, <laughs> it was. While SCP-096 was able to destroy 85% of 682's original body mass during their 27-hour battle, oh my it was God. left mentally broken, <laughs> wounded, and huddled in the corner. Oh my God. That's insanity. So this creature that's known for being unstoppable obliterated 85% of him, but it was too much. To this day, if ever confronted with SCP- So it's always gonna be a stalemate, cause this reptile is literally just too hard to destroy. So Shy Guy lost. P682, the Shy Guy reacts in pure terror, turning away and clawing at its own face. Attempt failed. Bruh. During a deadly containment breach, SCP-682 also went head-to-head -head organically with another iconic SCP Hall of Famer, SCP-106, also known as the Old Man. Okay. The Old Man and a shape-shifting psionic anomaly known as SCP-953 broke into 682's containment cell. The Old what? Man pulled both they, of his fellow- Oh, so this wasn't an attempt to defeat him. These two actually joined in to beat the reptile. Hello, anomalous combatants into- I wonder how SCP Rule 34 has got to be crazy. ...his pocket dimension to continue the battle on his terms. However, despite losing 67% of his body mass during the ensuing pocket dimension showdown, 682 still prevailed, with the old man eventually fleeing back to his cell, and 953 being collected and taken away by agents. One so th there's literally no way. Wh that, that's actually kind of horrifying. It's the fact that- this lizard is so hard to kill. It doesn't even win fights by overpowering its opponents. It wins fights by completely mentally draining their will to continue fighting. Once again, SCP-682 continued to hold the title. But it wasn't just cross-testing experiments, intentional or otherwise. The SCP Foundation's quest to kill 682 led them to a number of more <sighs> conventional murder methods, all with varying degrees of success. Due to SCP-682's highly adaptive abilities, some methods were discounted from the outset. For example, launching a powerful thermo- <laughs> Alright, we can't nuke it because that would wipe out the country, so we're not doing that! Their missile at the creature was soundly rejected by O5 Command, on the premise that if the creature wasn't destroyed and evolved to the point where it could shrug off nukes, humanity would be pretty much done for. That's actually so true. Every time, right, it can not, o not only if it adapts to nukes, but then it could use nukes itself. So you can only really test weapons on it that you're willing to risk it being able to adapt to and use. Other ideas were abandoned just for being too ridiculous, such as one researcher's suggestion to fly the creature through the air and drop it from a considerable height, hoping to kill it with a high altitude impact. All right, bro I'm not thinks sure he's Kaido. We even need to tell you why that's a terrible idea but during the yeah 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 it just just fell down and ran away experiments on scp-682 the studies range from honest to incompetent to straight up evil one guest researcher fed two small innocent children to the creature what why just to see what would happen he was then himself fed to the creature for a sadistic behavior which oh my God, these guys are nutty. What? They wanted to punish him for doing something they fed. Good shit. Good shit. Based SCP. Based SCP. And the CP and SCP does not stand for child uh, anything. Which was viewed as getting in the way of his professional conduct. After all, the foundation is meant to be cold, not cruel. It was SCP-682 that had the monopoly on cruelty. Mimetic kill agents were a resounding failure. They attempted to dismember 682 with a powerful laser, only to have the creature develop reflective services that displaced the beam and caused catastrophic damage to the area around it. Damn, they attempted right. to kill the creature by sucking all the air out of its containment facility and create a vacuum, but it expelled a dangerous gaseous compound that reacted violently, 
and exploded when air was once again introduced into the room. That's, that's insane. This thing just, this thing just doesn't work. Foundation used you can't, there's nothing you can do to precision blades to slice SCP-682 into approximately 12,000 pieces, then separated these pieces. Unsurprisingly by this point, this attempt also failed. The 12,000 pieces reformed a short while later into the fully operational killing- That's actually kinda horrible. There's no- he's him! He's just him! Matthew Falloway, thanks for the prime. There is no way to kill this lizard. Machine we all know and fear. In one particularly frightening display of intelligence and adaptability, the Foundation attempted to kill 682 with extreme heat, but it shielded itself by developing a second carpace composed of solid helium. When personnel entered the room following the failed attempt on the creature's life, it shattered its helium carapace into deadly shards <laughs> that fired around the room and shredded all Foundation personnel in attendance. Rah! It had set a trap. And that's it sets traps too. air trap had been wildly successful. The creature's ability to adapt to seemingly any offense is unparalleled to the point where Foundation staff have no idea how to classify this creature, whether it's organic, inorganic or even alive at all based on any definitions we could understand. At every turn, the creature just raised more questions. What is it? Is it possible to destroy it at all by any means? Who was even trying to kill who here? because it certainly seemed like SCP-682 had a masterful KD ratio by now. More extreme feats of cross-testing continued in the Foundation's growing desperation- Wait, they tried against Plague Doctor? I know him, I saw that one so far. ...to eliminate this monster. SCP-162, which is a hypnotic ball of sharp objects, hooks, and high-tension okay. fishing line, was introduced to 682's containment cell. Right, the hook they can hypnotize it. hooks latched onto the creature and tore huge portions off, including its entire lower jaw and one of its limbs. However, 682 was still able to breach containment, kill 11 people, and badly wound 86 others. Oh my it regenerated love. its severe injuries in no time. The beast was even taken to the domain of the Gate Guardian, one of the proposals for SCP-00. Oh the right. Guardian had a flaming sword hotter than the sun, capable of destroying- Did he censor the sword? Why is he putting hentai censorship on his sword? Destroying its targets on an atomic level. Naturally, SCP-682 survived and regenerated. Oh my god, it survived that?! Dude, it's going up a- it's a proposed 001. This is like- oh my god, the Guardian of the- Garden of Eden blasted him on an atomic level and it did nothing! Perhaps the most fascinating cross-test of all was between 682 and SCP-053, okay. who manifests as a kind, innocent little girl, with the unfortunate condition of causing homicidal tendencies in all who come into contact with her. Wait, so is there a plan to get SCP-682 to kill itself? For more than 10 minutes. The people with these tendencies would then attempt to harm the girl, but would immediately drop dead shortly after leaving the girl intact. The researchers present anticipated two possible outcomes here. The optimistic outcome, in which 682 enters a rage state, attacks 053, and died for good. And the realistic outcome, in which 682 attacks 053, possibly experiencing some minor injury or nothing at all, and 053 had to be removed from the containment cell. But that didn't happen. What? what did occur was considerably more shocking than any kind what? of violence. When 053 entered 682's containment chamber, the monster became uncharacteristically docile. Researchers and Oh my god! It adapted to the point that its defense mechanism was not attacking the little girl. Staff were baffled mm, and watched with amazement too. as 053 approached the terrifying, immortal, mass murdering <gasps> monster and began to play with it. 682 even allowed 053 to draw on its face with crayons. Researchers thought they must have been dreaming seeing this surreal display play out. 053 even appeared to have affection for this unkillable misanthrope. It was a single act in defiance of everything they thought they knew. That's wild. When Foundation personnel entered the containment cell to separate the two, 682 went ballistic and killed multiple guards. 053 also wept, sad at being separated from her new friend. That's crazy. Dude, this thing would not be beaten by anybody. Maybe Gojo, maybe Infinite Void could take care of this guy, but I don't know. Would he adapt to the Infinite Void? Like, how could you beat this guy? To this day, despite further testing, the Foundation has no idea how or why this happened. Like many details surrounding SCP-682, it's shrouded in deeply frustrating mystery. Mm. And so the tale of SCP-682 continues. It's just swimming around in acid right now. In spite of the Foundation's best efforts, 
The monster continues to breach containment and slaughter with some regularity, taking out its seemingly limitless hatred for not only human beings, but anything that dares drop breath. Nobody knows where exactly the creature is from, what its true nature is, or why its ability to adapt and regenerate far exceeds any known organism on this planet. Perhaps one day, through enough research and cross-testing, we can someday answer these questions with scientific precision. Maybe. But until then, we only have one answer. Hatred never dies. I don't know, hatred never dies, it's just immortal! It is just a hard-to-destroy reptile! It is just an incredibly hard-to-destroy reptile, and it will always evolve into the point that it will survive and thrive and adapt. That's crazy. Holy crap. That is a terrifying creature. And what's so what I like so much about SCP so far in my delving into these different creatures and monsters is that every single one of them is not scary for the reason why you think they are. The, the reason why SCP-682 is scary is not because it's, uh, it could shoot lasers. It's because of how terrifyingly and anomalously it could survive any- Ladies and gentlemen, I told you that we would be doing some SCPs, and uh, I'm gonna be keeping that promise. I have been enjoying my journey down through the SCP rabbit hole. So far, I've learned about uh, a lot of them. I've learned about the, the freaking immortal reptile. I've learned about the freaking- uh, goddamn plague doctor the infinite ikea where the dragons went so today we are going to be doing the shy guy this was one of the most requested ones in the comment sections of my videos so we will be doing the shy guy i was told that this one will horrify me when an anomaly is first detected by an scp foundation field that deer be thick though agent it's up to the foundation's mobile task forces to tag and bag the impossible entities right. before right. they can do any more harm sometimes these retrievals are uneventful other times not so much yikes all right all right listen you gotta take care of them you gotta take care of these scps especially when they're dealing with brutal forces of nature like scp-096 wait so this shy guy is actually dangerous it's called the shy guy ain't no way this is gonna be dangerous also known as the Shy Guy, a creature that, from the very first interaction with the Foundation, had a reputation for being dangerous and needed to be feared. A series of vague sightings and mysterious disappearances up in the frosty mountains of the Yukon first sparked the Foundation's Please, interest. In Yukon, there's nothing dangerous in Yukon. It's always the quiet ones, bro. It's always the quiet ones. When they were certain that they had an anomaly on their hands, two retrieval teams. Zulu 9A and Zulu 9B were dispatched to secure and contain the entity. Zulu 9A took the lead in a heavy duty chopper, equipped with 50 caliber GAU 19 heavy machine guns, Bro, and carrying an AT4. One shy guy, that freaking helicopters. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. You can suck on these nuts. Yeah, yeah. Or anti tank launcher. They were prepared for anything. Or so they thought, oh God. as they established There's a no visual way, on SCP-096 while two clicks away from the target. This little guy? Please! But this little dude is gonna be freaking dangerous? Come on, brother! Couldn't get a clear line of sight on the creature, but it appeared to be stationary, docile, and was making no attempt to flee. Oh, Piece yeah. of cake, right? Little did they know that SCP-096 was just looking away from them. What? If it was facing towards them, it'd be a whole different horror story, what? as Zulu 9A were about to find out. The team landed their helicopter what? next to the creature and were shocked to see that it was completely naked, in spite of the sub-zero temperatures all around them. Well, that's why it's shy, maybe, because his balls are dragging on the snow. I don't know, brother. The creature was unnaturally thin, as though it had been starved for weeks, with bone-white skin and unnaturally long limbs. The team guessed that the creature's arms must have been at least 1.5 meters long, but right. its docile nature and insubstantial body guy. mass gave the impression that it wouldn't prove too difficult to contain. That is, until they saw its face. Zulu 9A's captain was the lone survivor of the incident, what? as he was lucky enough to be looking away when the creature turned towards his team. What does it do when you look at its face? I have to know! The rest of the squad ended up staring eye to eye with SCP-096, and from that moment on, wasn't docile anymore. The creature began to whimper, then cry, <laughs> then sob uncontrollably in a what? way that sounded eerily human. This sudden change. Wait, so when you see its face, 
It gets shy and it starts crying. Okay, it's a kill. So. Ancient temperaments startled the rest of Zulu 9A. What? They shot at it because it started crying? Bro, what is this, America? And they opened fire on the creature. Under the hail of gunfire, SCP-096 entered a murderous frenzy. Bro, opened its vagina mouth and fucking annihilated them. And began tearing into the hapless squad of soldiers. While its flesh and organs did seem to take damage as a result of the barrage of 50 caliber rounds from the helicopter-mounted machine guns, its skeletal structure remained intact, and it continued its onslaught. Okay, I feel like that's not so bad, so it's just... It's dangerous and they're shooting at it like it's come on it's just like a lanky bigfoot shy bigfoot and that that doesn't seem dangerous at all why are people telling me shy guy is one of the scariest of them it's just doing its thing and if you annoy it it'll it'll fight you like like any bear would i don't know tearing the team limb from limb even after they'd blown practically all the flesh from the creature the at4 anti-tank launcher proved equally ineffective at stopping scp-096 while it was in attack mode and it was only after slaughtering the entire team that it returned to its docile state. It's actually kind of scary. The fact that it just, it does that. It wipes them out. And then it just sits down and starts whimpering all over again. There, there is something eerie about that. He knows exactly what the creature did to Zulu 9A after the gunfire started. But no trace of the team was left behind. Wait, what? Wait, what? Hold on. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. So it... Yes, so they, they pissed it off, and then it killed them, but they were gone? What does it mean, they were gone? No evidence of them remained? What does that mean? So, it didn't just tear them limb from limb. It, what, it consumed them? It pulled a Kirby and just fucking went down on them like my imaginary girlfriend goes down on my meat? Zulu 9B touched down soon after, and with a grave warning from the captain not to look at the creature's face, they were finally able to subdue it. A bag was placed over SCP-096's face. Right, so as long as you don't look at it, you're fine. And you could just put it away, and it's fine. All seemed right. to soothe it enough to this move it- This seems like such a easy SCP to deal with. ...to a nearby Foundation facility. Little did they know, they just obtained one of the deadliest SCPs of all time. What? what Come on, bro! Ain't no way this is one of the deadliest SCPs. You just keep a bag on its face and it's completely useless. While it may have been under lock and key for now, it seemed inevitable that it would get out and cause more violence and chaos. Research and containment- Why? It was just sitting in its own place in the forest anyway. Easy, easy. Listen, I'm just saying that to build up my nerves here, okay? This ain't gonna traumatize me. The procedures for the SCP-096 were put under the command of Dr. Dan, a senior researcher at the site. It was his job to find out exactly what this being was capable of. And the more he tested, the more he realized that they were dealing with something- Dude, they were just sending people in there to get eaten? Truly terrifying. Disposable D-Class personnel were used to figure out exactly what it was that caused the creature to enter its attack mode. Just as it had during the initial retrieval mission, SCP-096 went berserk when any of the attending personnel saw its face. In this stage, oh, it, it would enter its vagina mouth and annihilated them. For a period of considerable and unstoppable distress for one to two minutes, covering its face and wailing loudly. When the period Just of distress ended, guy. the creature would mercilessly slaughter every D class that had seen its face. And just like with D class. Ha! They're just D-class. They're not real people. Zulu 9A. No trace of their bodies would be left behind. Dr. Den was horrified and intrigued by this phenomenon. The creature killed anyone that saw its face directly, but could the same be said for indirect depictions of the creature's face? Hmm. Huh? Such as images Wait, and so they never. so they don't even know what his face looks like? They can't even see it on images? Why not? Dr. Dan was desperate to find out. More D-class personnel were brought in to frightening results. Dr. Dan found that the creature did well, indeed I, for one, have to say that I do not like this diversity casting. I don't see any test death this. row women right now. So, I'm just saying, not very inclusive of you, SCP explained. To frightening results. Dr. Dan found that the creature did indeed still enter attack mode when people saw pictures and videos of SCP-096's face. Wait, how does it know? If you see a picture of it somewhere else, it goes into attack mode? It just knows, it feels embarrassment. The creature seemed to have an innate sense of when people were viewing these representations, even when it should have had no conceivable way of knowing. 
That's it, insane. Okay, that's scary. Oh, <laughs> that's that's kind of scary. But still, it's okay. So it goes into rage mode in its own prison cell. Okay. Didn't matter how far away or how many barriers were in place between the uh -huh. viewer and the creature, hmm. the attack mode would still activate. And once it did, it seemed as though nothing could stop the creature from hunting down the one who saw its face. Wait. So if someone will see its face somewhere else, it'll break out of this prison to chase them down and kill them. With all of this new data, special okay, so containment. How does it break out? Like, what powers does it actually have? Why wouldn't just you know having it in a prison cell just you know confine it? Why isn't that enough? Procedures were devised to keep the creature safely under lock and key. Its cell was a five meter by five meter by five meter airtight steel cube fitted with advanced pressure sensors and laser right. detectors to ensure that SCP-096 remained in its cell without risking anyone having visual contact with the creature's face. There we go! Problem solved! Issue over! All cameras and video equipment were strictly oh. forbidden, and weekly checks well, were- yeah, because if you look at it, it breaks out of prison and kill you, so... Any cracks or holes in the containment cell were mandatory. Of course, none of this would stop the creature if anyone somehow saw its face. Wait, so if you still saw its face, even after all of that, it'll break out of this, like, unbreakable jail? It just gains this incredible power? There has to be limits to its power, right? In order to solve that- Right, I saw them, uh, they tried to put this up against the, you know, indestructible reptile, and it wasn't able to destroy the indestructible reptile. Problem. I guess that's just like an unstoppable force against an immovable object that doesn't really prove anything. Dr. Dan would need to continue his research. To find a method of subverting the creature's deadly glance, they needed to know exactly what they were dealing with. But how could they, when even a glance at a photo or video of the being yeah. meant certain death? A certain death. So there's no way to actually stop it. That's wild. It is unstoppable. It is one of their unstoppable SCPs. Containing it is really just not about containing it physically, it's about placating it in a way that no one actually sees its face. A potential solution was proposed, creating an artistic oh. representation of the creature's face, okay. something that hadn't yet been attempted. But how would they achieve such a yeah, thing? Simple. Dude! They get a death row artist! Oh my god! They'd procure a D-class prisoner with some artistic talent, and they found one who had been a tattoo artist before becoming a foundation- Let's go! The diversity hire! Let's go! Guinea pig. Women could be death row prisoners too, guys. And if you don't think so, well then I take- I advise you to take a good look at yourself and say that maybe you're the problem. Dr. Dan formulated an ingenious plan for keeping this D-class alive for long enough to accurately draw an image of SCP-09- Holy shit, these people are evil. Fix's face. He would be placed in a bathysphere diving bell several kilometers underwater and tens of kilometers away from the containment cell where the SCP was being held. The D-class was made to look at a photograph of the creature's face and then replicate that image in a pencil sketch. And I'm sure they didn't tell this artist that, uh, you know, dude's gonna show up to your doorstep. Dr. Dan first confirmed that the creature's attack mode mm. is only activated by the creature's face by having the D-Class look at a series of photos of the SCP's body parts, one by one, okay, finally so it's finishing its with its face. The D-Class began drawing and even remarked on how creepy the SCP's facial features were, despite not knowing the deadly context. Meanwhile, <laughs> so back it was creepy looking. Already. In its containment cell, <laughs> SCP-096 sensed someone viewing its face and entered its inconsolable crying state followed by its attack mode. So, it's crazy that it actually could just break out of all this shit. It broke out of containment easily and began making a beeline for the D-Class. So there is no- none of the technology that the SCP Foundation actually has could stop this guy if it wants to break out. Traversing the miles between it and its prey, the D-Class didn't know it as he locked the finished drawing into a separate, autonomous submersible, but he was already dead. As the drawing made its way he up- He was already dead? Bro! I thought it was a diversity artist! My god! Dude, kill some women, please! Can you have some respect for women and kill some of them too? God damn it! To a researcher on the surface, SCP-096 dived into the water and started swimming down towards the artist. Minutes later, the bathysphere was breached and the D-Class was torn to shreds. SCP-096 was recaptured without issue by surface recovery team hey, Fox- you just, you just don't need to look at it. You just shoot a net at it. Xtrot 303A. And further testing on the drawing showed that artistic representations of SCP-096's face were in fact harmless. 
from this experience. All right, so you know how it looks. That's a, that's something, I guess. We now know that the creature has a gaunt face with totally white eyes, possibly indicating blindness and a grossly extended jaw. Nevertheless, Dr. Dan was adamant that SCP-096 was too dangerous to be left alive and requested permission from the upper echelons of the Foundation to terminate the creature by any uh -huh. means necessary. Okay, so they figured it out and they'll annihilate it. All right, all right. The, this thing isn't like the reptile, right? It's not indestructible. It's just dangerous if you see its face. However, the doctor's request would fall on deaf ears uh. until it all started with a seemingly innocent image. While it's now been redacted for your safety, the black speck inside the yellow circle was once a minuscule image of SCP-096, taken unknowingly in the 1990s by a What? Bro! Okay, now I'm starting to recognize why this is actually as horrifying as it is. Semi-professional mountaineer. Okay, that, that's One day horrifying. There that's actually scarring. This thing could be in any photograph taken randomly in some background, and that photograph circles online, and this SCP will go on an unstoppable rampage, killing people. Okay, that's horrifying. I, I take it all back. We're looking at old photographs when his eyes passed over the tiny speck without even noticing that he had seen anything. But SCP-096 noticed and began entering its attack mode. It tore through its steel containment unit like tissue paper, Bro. causing the release of a nerve agent that killed a number of attending Foundation staff. The monster then fled the base and began pursuing its prey, with Mobile Task Force Tau- there's nothing they could do about it. They can't stop it. One in hot pursuit. That's horrifying. That is actually horrifying. This is like a- And you know what's gonna happen. The second that people hear about this, everyone's gonna ask, but what was that picture? And then they see that picture. That's actually a world-ending SCP. Holy crap! Dr. Alexi, who was helping to manage the site where the SCP was contained, was in dismay over the situation. Dr. Dan was out of the country at the time, trying to discover more about the creature's origins. However, he did leave the mobile task force with a new secret weapon against the rampaging okay. Shy Guy. Project Scramble. Scramble were state-of-the-art goggles featuring a new technology created by Dr. Dan, which, using artistic renditions of 096's facial features, could detect and scramble the features of SCP-096 into an- Yo! That is so smart! That is huge brain! That is colossal brain! So you can wear these goggles, you can actually look at it, and you wouldn't technically see it. And it wouldn't get shy because you didn't technically see it itself. Damn, science W! Dude, I love how the- my, one of my favorite things about the SCP isn't just the creativity of these monsters, but also not only just making them absolutely horrifying, but, uh, like the solutions that people try to come up with. It's- it's so almost lifelike in the level of detail they put into it. Unrecognizable form, preventing the normally deadly effect of gazing upon its face. In theory, this would allow- IN THEORY?! Oh, no! EF Tau-1 to engage safely with 096 once its prey had been eliminated and bring it back into containment. But does that- So they, they don't even try to save this guy. They do not even try to save this person that it's running after. They'll just, well, we'll just follow the SCP, he'll kill whoever looked at it, and we'll take it back home. Monster struck on two fronts. First, the prey in question was located in a population center, creating the potential for a huge loss of life. And the second bigger problem was that the scramble technology didn't work. What? It didn't work. That was just a theory. A containment theory. Gray pixels of the creature's face would reach the eyes of the task force before the internal microprocessor had time to scramble them. The mission turned into a death sentence as SCP-096 slaughtered almost the entire task force. Brother. Can't scramble it faster than light. You just see it for, for a split second and it'll come for you. As well as a number of civilians in town, including an infant and its entire family. What, why do we need that random detail? Just that random detail to show you, yep, collateral damage is a bitch. It was a monumental disaster, made even worse by a final revelation. Dr. Dan and Dr. Alexi had- That's actually really horrifying. SCP containment, like you, they really can't contain this. This is literally uncontainable. The best you could do is hope that the world forgets about it and never sees it because there's no possible way the Foundation can actually fucking deal with it. That's actually horrifying. Had themselves facilitated the entire containment breach and allowed the resulting massacre to happen. With Dr. Dan hoping it would be enough motivation for Foundation Command huh. to greenlight his research into destroying the creature. He 
wanted that to happen as an excuse to destroy it. What a fucking pragmatic utilitarian mother shitter. Anything that would give him the opportunity to kill this thing would be worth the bloodshed. His plan worked, and the SCP Foundation saw it his way, approving his request- There's nothing they could do about it. It cannot be contained. To neutralize SCP-096. Dr. Dan is a psycho. However, success comes at a cost for Dr. Dan. Once he figures out a way to finally kill the creature, though done in his line of duty, he himself will be terminated by the Foundation for his crimes against humanity. Damn! Foundation be ruthless! Okay, so the Foundation, they're not good guys. They're not bad guys either. They just kind of do their thing. Wait, so Dr. Dan, they're like, all right, Dr. Dan, you've made a very good point. So we are going to be uh, following your advice and killing this thing because it's too dangerous. But in order to convince us to do that, you caused people to die. So uh, we're going to kill you too. But considering Foundation would strip his protection and make him D-class. That's how it works. Dude! How much damage SCP-096 is capable of causing if it ever got to a major population center, or even worse, was ever- People see it. <gasps> oh my god, imagine broadcasting it! Caught on camera and broadcast to a worldwide audience, the doctor himself would likely deem his own death a justifiable cost. To this day, the foundation- Oh my god, dude. Can you imagine just taking a picture of it, putting it on the news, and then this thing is just on a warpath, an unstoppable warpath, just wiping out civilization? The is researching ways to kill the creature, and they're still looking for their silver bullet. And the pressure is on. They hadn't known about the seemingly innocent picture that sparked the last containment breach, the one taken <gasps> decades ago, in which the shy guy had only occupied four <gasps> tiny pixels. Four Four pixels. Or tiny pixels that resulted in multiple innocent lives lost. So be careful where you look, because who knows how many other photos of the creature are lurking mm. out there. Photos with an innocent dot in the background. Your mm. eyes glance over it, not even noticing the little blip, until you hear a distant wailing that seems to be getting closer. Dude, and closer that is a horrifying and closer. And then, it's already too late. Bro! That's insane. That's scary as shit. Like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. Stay weird, fam. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another SCP episode. The Old Man. It sounds cringe. I wasn't gonna watch this one. This was, um forced upon me by all the people in my chat basically saying nuts you have to watch the old man one it's terrifying bro there is nothing scary about an old man okay like please bro please bro now let's see what this old man is all about bro i just saw the scarlet king all right i just saw hyper interdimensional satan all right dude old man isn't gonna be scary it's 3 a.m and the facility is quiet Dude, if it's not a Denny's parking lot, bro, it ain't got nothing. Office workers and administrators roam the halls. Security officers stand at their posts, clad in advanced tactical armor and carrying standard issue M4 carbines. Three Foundation employees sit at flickering monitors watching a live feed of footage from the containment cell of the infamous SCP-106, or as it's referred to by all staff, the old man. Bro, they called it the old man, bro. If it was really scary, they would have called it something else but they didn't. They called it the old man, implying it not being scary. No foundation personnel are permitted to travel within 60 feet of the cell for security reasons. You can't even go near the cell? What? I have never heard of an SCP like that before. And nobody is permitted to physically interact with the anomaly without the approval of two thirds of O5 command. The Dude, this is the second one in a row that uh, I'm learning about O5 Command. What is up with these five guys? Are they dangerous? Are they bad? Are they good? What do they do? The observer's eyes itch and sting from hours of unending blue light exposure, but they can't look away. They just have to have constant surveillance on the old man. Dude, he's just an old man, bro. Come on, brother. The old man is crafty. SCP-445, the cupcake. No, chat. He might have the insatiable bloodlust of a hungry great white shark, but he's not mindless. He's a calculating predator, more Wait. sadistic than the worst human serial killer. And he's always searching for the next opportunity. According to the Foundation record. Wait, so he's a genius, this guy? Had they catch him? He's been active since at least World War II, and it's estimated that he has hundreds, if not thousands of victims to his name. Holy shit. So he's just a serial killer. Why can't you go near his cell? 
Does he have, like, anomalous powers? I mean, obviously he has anomalous powers or the SCP wouldn't give a shit about him. But, like, dude, he's just a cunning old dude. But extremely foolish mistakes of underestimating him. After all, it only takes a few seconds of inattentiveness and the briefest moment of distraction to give him the window he needs. To do what, you ask? Oh, don't worry. You'll find out. Wait, so, oh god. So this guy really is, um, he's just a serial killer. All right, he's a serial killer, and now he's old, and they caught him. All right, okay, listen, that's not too scary. Just like they did. <laughs> the old man has his nickname for a reason. Most of the time, he really does look exactly like that, an old man, or more specifically, an old man's decaying corpse. Oh, oh, so he's a zombie. So he's a zombie serial killer. All right, all right. You know the only thing worse than a serial killer? An immortal one. Body covered in rotten, dark, grayish black flesh that looks like putrid meat. Though the creature has been observed being able to change shape, the rot seems to run too deep for the old man. What the fuck is going on with her boobs? <laughs> Wait, what? The creature no. has been observed being able to change shape. What? That's the old man? <laughs> Dude, what? The rot seems to run too deep for the old man to ever hide it. Foundation employees that have observed SCP-106 for extended periods of time have reported seeing it assume the form of grinning, decayed children and women whose rotted flesh barely hangs on their creaking bones. Okay, that's scary. What? Just seeing the images through a video feed is enough to cause a lifetime of insomnia. <laughs> so he's like a really bad uh, chameleon, right? He could transform into other people that just happen to have their flesh peeling off. It's just a zombie skinwalker out here, all right? That's not so bad. Come on, dude. We've been dealing with indestructible lizards, okay? Like, I feel like as far as the SCP Foundation goes, this guy's kind of a bit of a joke, right? And other sleeping issues. Still, they have a job to do and the cameras remain fixed on the old man. He's been completely motionless for three months, just sitting there like a Buddhist monk in deep meditation. A novice might see this period of inactivity as a cause for celebration, but those with experience know that this is merely the calm before the storm. And what does that even mean? Just kill him then. Well, I guess he's immortal. But like, come on. Can't you just take him and plop him in with the lizard and just get rid of each other? SCP-106 can remain in a dormant state for months at a time. Described by the Foundation scientists as a lulling state, it's believed that the old man is simply waiting for its captors to get soft, make a mistake, or simply have a momentary lapse in concentration, which is all it needs what? to make it- just by walking near its jail cell? It's move. It had happened so many times before, and it was about to happen again. One of the observers must have felt an overwhelming wave of anxiety as he saw the creature ever so slightly twitch. Just a tiny quiver in the oh, shoulder muscles. Oh shit. He's sleeping for months and then a little, t a little twitch. A little movement. But that was enough to tell the observer that their day had just taken a terrifying turn. He grabbed the emergency phone fixed to his desk and practically screamed into the receiver that 106 is moving, that they need a tactical team stat. What? Why? Just because he moves? Like, I guess he's tough to contain somehow, but that's, that's a level of surveillance that's just insane. Why don't they have him chained up? Why do they just leave him sitting there if just his twitching is enough to call in a tactical team? Like, dude, they gotta get this guy freaking lobotomized ASAP. But he was already too late. He and the other two observers stared into the monitors with their mouths agape as a gooey, rust-like substance began to pool around the creature on the floor of its cell. What? Slowly, the creature craned its withered neck around. Its face was fixed into a broad, yellow-toothed, lipless grin. Its eyes had the kind of dull, flat malice of an underwater predator. It looked okay. directly into the camera, directly at them, and smiled. The observers knew Dude, that is so scary. Oh my god, it's like he knows what's going on on the other side of the camera almost. Dude, this was bad. Really, really bad. With what they could have sworn was a little nod, the old man began sinking into the rusty puddle it made on the Oh! <laughs> he could just melt through? Okay, so he's a cancer class object because he's hard to contain. He's also a serial killer, and I guess he's immortal. But I feel like that there's there are better ways to deal with him, right? Like... He doesn't seem that powerful, per se. ...ground beneath it until it had disappeared entirely. SCP-106 is capable of phasing through any solid surface with ease, making it one of the hardest entities to reliably oh, contain. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Dude could phase, bro. Bro has Kamui. Fine. All right, so he's hard to contain, and they have to have constant surveillance on him, because the... So how do they catch him to begin with? Right? I feel like catching him to begin with should be impossible. And earning it a spot on the dreaded Keter class, reserved for the anomalies that are complete nightmares to keep locked up. 
Through the years of costly research and deadly trial and error, the Foundation would later devise ways of at least slowing the creature down. It's shown to have an aversion to lead, highly competent <laughs> Bro has Superman rules. Dude has Superman laws. Flex or random physical structures and intense bright light. None of these cost- They should keep him in intense bright light. Yes, you'll pay a little more for the electric bill, but brother, this guy could just phase out his stuff. Man could just go into holes. Harm to the creature, as far as we know, literally nothing can. But they'll at least buy you some precious extra seconds with which to at least try and escape. Seconds the three observers didn't have. One of them grabbed an emergency line again and barked into it that they had lost visual on the anomaly. Just then the observers heard a faint crackling sound behind them. He knew where the people were watching on the video camera. This thing is too intelligent. And the hissing of a chemical burn. They turned in horror to see a huge rusty burn mark expanding across the wall, right next to the door, which was their only escape route. They backed as far away from the door as they could as a rotten hand began reaching out of the mass of corrosive oh black sludge, Lord. followed by the grinning- Dude, there's just something about intelligent monsters that are horrifying. We always somehow equate intelligence with some level of humanity. I, just that weird cognitive dissonance between what it takes to be a human and what it takes to be moral is innately horrifying. Base of SCP-106, ready to have some fun. Meanwhile, two heavily armed security officers, Agents Goodwin and Resnick, came charging down the corridor toward the observation rooms. It became a bleak slogan during SCP-106 escape attempts that all you need to do is follow the screams. And that motto was proven- That is not good, what? True that night. Because all it's vicious, it's evil, it's vindictive. Not only does it think and knows more than it should even be capable of understanding, it takes so much pleasure in this, right? If this is some sort of immortal, right? This is the old man. What's so scary about calling it the old man is the fact that it will always just be an old man. It'll just live forever. It's in no rush. It can use up all of your resources just watching it and one day it'll be like all right and it'll wake up it'll walk through some walls and it'll murder the people that are terrified of him and okay they'll catch him again they'll put him in his cell but it's only inevitable until he actually does that again awful things were happening to the observation personnel they were certainly screaming about it of course even with the top of the line firearms there was little they could do to harm the rampaging old man he seemed immune to all forms of physical damage all they could hope to do was keep the thing distracted until the scientists and continue <laughs> they just walk in <laughs> there's no way they walk into the room with their giant assault rifles and they just go <laughs> to get his attention specialists finish the preparations to lure him the old man's just rick sanchez except a little pettier back into his containment cell. He has portals, he's old, he's petty, he's old. Goodwin surged forward while Resnick covered his six. Vigilance was key, as unlike a standard human combatant, SCP-106 could attack from literally any angle including above or below. Physical obstacles were mean? irrelevant to him and no cover was safe. The hardened security officers could see the burn mark on the wall of the observation room as they approached. SCP-106 was perpetually coated in a thick black mucus with powerful corrosive properties that left any surfaces it touched permanently marred. Bro, it's just the anti-cum. This guy is too strong. None of us have a chance. Foundation scientists speculated that this mucus served as a kind of pre-digestive substance that tenderized- Pre-digestive? He digests you before killing you. God damn. As is meat and bone alike. But to what purpose this serves is a mystery as the old man has never been observed eating. It's postulated mm -hmm. that the only purpose is causing additional pain. Goodwin and Resnick- Additional pain. Dude's just- vindictive and evil. Nick knew to treat this hissing sludge as a potential threat, as the corrosive properties would remain active for as much as six hours before finally fizzling out. The two officers shared a quiet nod before Goodwin breached the observation room door with a hard kick. The two of them surged okay. inside, guns at the ready. In their time working at the foundation- What do you mean, searched inside? Is he just not there? They'd seen some truly horrific sights. From the mutilation of D-class personnel, typically death row prison inmates brought in for use as SCP guinea pigs, to the violence and- God, dude, that's so horrible. ...to him of a containment breach. But there was nothing in their past that would ever make the horrifying sight they saw in the observation room that night feel normal. All three observers were dead. Almost nothing remained of two of them, and the third, while still intact, no longer looked human. He looked like he'd somehow been dead a hundred years in the brief period that the old man had been free. Oh 
my god. This old man is so fucking scary. It's like pure human intelligence. It's like an observational serial killer that's just unstoppable, right? I think the, the ultimate fear of... The reason why serial killers are so scary is because you don't know who it is, right? You don't know if you're next. The reason why he's scary is because you know who it is and you know you're next. It's like it's taking the classic serial killer horror story and flipping it on its head, somehow making it even scarier. His skin was gray and completely dried out, and his mouth was locked into a perpetual scream. It was a massacre, but there was no sign of the old man. Goodwin grabbed his radio. Well, he could teleport, right? He could just portal through walls, so. Radio and whispered, This is Goodwin in observation room six, requesting immediate backup. We have no idea where this thing is. But his sentence was cut off by a sudden scream from Agent Resnick. SCP Foundation security officers are as tough as nails, the best of the best, you might say. Recruited from the top military. There's no way, bro. They named him Mr. Resnick. Did they give him a name just so you'd feel bad if he dies? Organizations in the world. So hearing one of them scream in fright is a rare, if not impossible, occurrence. But even they were forced to yell out in fear when they looked up to see the old man standing on the ceiling, grinning down at them. Resnick raised his M4 and shot a three-round burst at center mass. SCP-106 didn't care. Even under sustained gunfire from the two security officers, it didn't Bro. flinch. The old man simply reached down and snatched Agent Resnick from the ground like it was picking an apple from a tree. The old man held Resnick oh in one hand. God, dude. So he's... he's He's strong too, not super strong, but he's strong. And impounded its other rotten fist into the agent's body, breaking all of his bones. It's so interesting. Like, I, I guess the thing, he, he's like an incarnation of fear almost, right? Not fear in some ethereal way like Dementors in Harry Potter, right? Where they make you experience fear. Or the hole from Rick and Morty making you experience your fear. It's not fear on some metaphysical level, it's just... The fear of knowing that, that it's inevitable. Resnick screamed for his partner to help him, but before Goodwin could do anything, SCP-106 began receding back into another slimy burn mark on the wall. Only this time, he was taking his screaming victim with him. Agent Resnick gave one more horrified scream before he was pulled backward into the inky darkness, leaving the room. How did they even capture this guy to begin with? There's no way he's indestructible, right? The lizard, 682, is indestructible. There's no way this guy's also indestructible. You know why he left Goodwin alive and he just took Resnick? Because ironically, it's scarier to leave him alive. Because he knows that he's next and he doesn't know when it'll be. It's that impending doom. Dude is just absolutely callous and horrifying. You might think this would be the end of it. But no. For poor Agent Resnick, the worst was yet to come. He was being dragged into what the SCP Foundation scientists refer to as the old man's pocket dimension. Dude, it is Kamui! Oh my god! I made it, I said that like as a joke 10 minutes ago, but it literally is just Kamui! A miniature layer of reality within our own where the malicious SCP is essentially a cruel, all-powerful god. According to witness reports extracted from Vic- Oh my god, dude. That's insane. Wait, is that what they tried to do to SCP-682, right? Um, 682, the indestructible lizard. He put him in the pocket dimension, and that wasn't enough, right? He ended up getting, uh, e even this guy, even the old man, doing all of this, putting him in a torture dimension to torture him for eternity, it wasn't enough. And his spirit ended up getting broken by the lizard. That's actually kind of insane. It's like, instead of an indestructible force versus an immovable object, it's... It's a mass. It's a sadist versus a masochist. A sadist can never beat a masochist because the masochist is just gonna take it. Them's who were taken to this little nightmare realm. The dimension resembles a series of twisting, endless corridors where the old man stalks and tortures his captured victims to the breaking point, manipulating space and time to his own sadistic ends. Oh my god, bro, that's insane. Lizard just sitting there. I could do this all day. On rare occasions, the SCP will even release its victims just for the joy of hunting, capturing, and torturing them all the bro just giving them a little semblance of freedom for sport oh my god dude over again while agent resnick was learning the true meaning of terror containment specialists were mobilizing in its cell preparing the one known tried and true method of luring the old man back tempting it with the prospect of causing even more suffering. That's why it's a Keter class creature not that it could destroy a country or blow up a planet or any of that shit but it's a catcher class creature because the only way to keep it at bay is to constantly feed it death row inmates to torture. You can only placate it. You could never truly contain it. In order to do this, Foundation personnel take one of the aforementioned Class D personnel 
and begin inducing extreme pain by breaking a major bone or slicing a tendon every 20 minutes. And it doesn't even contain him, it just entertains him. The best they can do is entertain the old man. The victim's agonizing screams are then played over the facility's intercom, acting as bait for the pain-loving old man. The screams echo through the facility's otherwise silent halls as the mutilated corpse of Agent Resnick falls from a new scorch mark on the ceiling. The old man can hear the sounds of suffering ringing out through the air around him, and he can barely contain his excitement over the prospect of a new plaything. The snapped femurs, the torn Achilles tendons, it was all too good to miss. Oh my god, dude. Bro, god damn. It's like, obviously, the SCP Foundation is corrupt as shit to be able to go ahead and do this stuff. But if you think about it, what's the alternative, right? You take a death row inmate and torture him for eternity to placate the old man so he doesn't torture innocent people. Having had its twisted fun with the security officers and observers, SCP-106 wandered back to its containment cell, where a new screaming victim awaited. The other security officers, containment specialists, and scientists- And it's not like they're outsmarting him either, right? They don't outsmart him to get back in his cell. The reason why he's back in his cell is because it'll be more fun for him. There is no way to actually cause suffering for this guy. Evacuated the area, leaving the old man alone with his prey. While the unfortunate Class D was left to his fate, the rest of the staff commenced cleanup procedures, which mainly involved wiping the brown and black mucus from the walls. It would probably be at least another month before anything like this happened again. And they know there's no quelling it. They know there's no stopping it. There's placating it until it's satisfied. Bro. The old man is just, he's gonna torture people until he busts a nut, enters a state of post-nut clarity until he gets his libido back to start just killing more people. And then they hire new people to observe him because no one that actually knows what he's capable of is gonna observe him. They hire new people to observe him and it's inevitable that in a month or two, when the old man gets hungry again, Chanel would be transferred over to the facility to replace the fallen. All in all, just another night at the SCP Foundation. That might be one of the most horrifying SCPs I've ever seen. Dude, that one was brutal. Remember how you started this with the old man can't be scary? Yeah, well, <laughs> well, yeah, well, you know, listen. <laughs> well, yeah, okay, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another SCP video. I have been deep diving, I have been looking into the lore, I have been learning all sorts of things, and I have great news. The last one horrified me and traumatized me so much, I wanted a wholesome one. So chat recommended SCP-999, the Tickle Monster. There is no way Tickle Monster will be as traumatizing as when day breaks. So freaking Tickle Monster, send me to a better headspace, because when day breaks has traumatized me. God damn. All right, let's do it. All cross-testing to kill or pacify SCP-682 had failed miserably. If you haven't seen- That's the lizard, right? They they tried their best to get rid of SCP-682. That can't be just hard to destroy reptile. That one I've, I've dived into already. Go watch our video on the legendary hard to kill reptile to see just how powerful and terrifying this creature is. It faced the Gate Guardian, an SCP with a flaming sword hotter oh, than the sun. shit, wait, what? I don't know this one. I don't know the Gate Guardian. Capable of tearing your atoms to shreds and came out fine. In its face-off with the horrifying SCP-096, also known as the Shy Guy, it broke the Shy Guy's mind and reduced it to gibbering despair. <laughs> Oh my god. Now that I've seen the Shy Guy, it actually hits so much harder that uh, that 682 wasn't able to be beaten by this guy. Even SCPs with supposedly unlimited powers simply refused to engage the beast in combat. So, when it was proposed that they test 682 with SCP-999, a creature known among Foundation staff as the Tickle Monster. What? The idea Are you joking me? They tried the Tickle Monster against 682? Come on, bro, please. It was considered laughable. 682 had been burned, suffocated, cut up, incinerated, and growled in the faces of the gods. How could this so-called Tickle Monster ever hope to survive an encounter? Let bro, what the frick is this? Is this Jello Kirby? Don't win a fight. Some even believe that this was the last we'd see of SCP-999. Oh but my what god, makes they the thought story it was just gonna get killed by the reptile. Really remarkable is that that isn't how this played out. As you'll soon discover, SCP-999 is an amazing and unique SCP oh. in and of itself. 
but its secret origins and its interactions with some other prominent figures in the SCP universe are what make this humble, slimy creature beyond extraordinary. I am so confused. Prepare yourself Wait, for the- They're not gonna tell us? They're gonna literally blue ball us again about the SCP-999 versus 682? Heartwarming, yes, you heard that right. The heartwarming story of SCP-999. Heartwarming SCP? That is not two words I ever expected to see go together. Um, but anyway, I can use it after I saw when day breaks, because that, that fucking traumatized me. Several highly trained agents on 682 detail place 999 into the immortal lizard cell. Okay. Compared to the giant reptilian sitting across from it, 999 wasn't much to look at. It's a large orange amorphous blob of anomalous slime. Weighing in at around- Is it just like immortal? Like, I'm just so confused. 120 pounds, SCP-999 was nothing compared to the monstrosity it was supposed to face. While its weight has, in the past, caused minor injuries to some of its human handlers, it has never caused serious or long-lasting damage of any kind. It just made him a little itchy? That- Wait, I'm- s Why is he called the Tickle Monster? Tell me about this guy! What is going on? A living thing. Why am I being so Even its diet consists only of candy and sweets, with a particular preference for M&Ms and Necco wafers. It okay. consumes these treats through the cell membrane of its slimy body, nice. much like an amoeba. Nice. This extremely stretchy membrane <laughs> means the creature is highly malleable, including the ability to stretch and flatten itself out to a mere two centimeters so thick. So it's like this really wholesome SCP. Just super wholesome SCP. I'm confused as to what properties makes it interesting at any point. At rest, just the creature takes a dome-like shape around two meters wide and one meter in height. The closest things the creature has to limbs are prehensile pseudopods. Those are the arm-like okay. projections normally seen on single-celled organisms, of which it has Wait, at least- Is this guy like a cell? Is that why he's so immortal? Because cells will instant- like- eternally regenerate the more you hear about this utterly harmless creature the more that matching it up with the pure embodiment of absolute hatred known as scp-682 feels downright cruel in absolute contrast oh to the misanthropic attitudes of the reptile why nine would they do this why would they put in 999 bro and nine loves humans it has a playful dog-like attitude much like an overexcited puppy when approached 999 will react with extreme joy and slither towards the nearest person in order to interact. It's just wholesome! It's just pure wholesomeness! It will leap onto them, using two of its three prehensile pseudopods to hug the person. Why does this guy even need to be contained? You can just have him wandering around, doing his shit. While the third nuzzles the person's face, emitting high-pitched cooing and gurgling noises throughout. The creature is apparently pleasant in every conceivable fashion as even its odor okay. has been reported to smell just like the favorite scent of whoever is smelling it. Wait, okay, now I'm starting to creep out. It That's already a non-objective smell. Hold up. It doesn't have a, a specific smell. Its smell differs based on who smells it. Like, this, this almost feels like it has mind control properties. Does everyone love it because it can manipulate them into just loving it? Examples have included chocolate, fresh laundry, bacon, roses, and Play-Doh. It's no one likes the smell of Play-Doh. Fight me! Play-Doh smells awful. It's impossible to oversell just how beloved and benevolent this strange creature is. It's one of the rare sapient SCPs to earn the safe class, and it's allowed to Let's roam go. freely around its facility at all times, Let's go. apart from a one-hour bedtime period between 8 and 9 p.m. In the rare instances that 999 has caused harm to a worker at the facility, it immediately began to back away and contract its body while whimpering in a kind of dog-like apology. The closest the Foundation has ever come to having a real incident with the creature was the time someone accidentally fed it a can of caffeinated cola, causing it to become hyper for an hour before becoming visibly queasy. Okay, that's not dangerous. They just got it. They drugged it a little bit. Okay, all right. You'll be relieved to know that it's since made a full recovery. But what would happen when this whimsical creature is forced to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Foundation's most ill-tempered monster? The employees observing the test watched in suspense as 999 began to enthusiastically slither towards 682. Yeah, it's no it's surprise that awesome and loves everything. Wait, is it going to turn 682 into some sort of loving creature? After being tortured and almost killed hundreds of times during testing, 682 had grown jaded to the cross tests it was regularly subjected to. When it saw this strange orange blob squelching across the ground towards it, it sighed and groaned, expecting the worst. <laughs> what is that? The creature asked of its gelatinous guest. What, they could communicate? Huh? SCP-999 began jumping up and down in front of 682 like an excited puppy, creating a high-pitched squealing noise. 
Just as it regarded all living things, 682 thought the creature bouncing around before it was disgusting and hardly worth the effort to destroy. Was the Foundation even trying anymore? With a single vicious stomp, 682 flattened ah! the friendly creature beneath one of its feet. No, oh, why would he do such a thing? Wait, so it's not a mind control that works on everyone unless the reptile is specifically strong against mind control? Observers were prepared to charge in and liberate 999 from under 682's claws. But then something truly unexpected happened. The expression on 682's acid-eaten face began to slowly change. What? It was beginning to smile. To smile. No! The observers recorded a noise what they thought could have been a chuckle as the creature growled and said, Hmm, what is this? It could talk? I Wait, was this always able to talk to everyone? Feel good. While the observers looked on, stunned at what was happening, 999 began to slither and crawl up from between 682's toes. It reformed on its scaly leg and slithered up along its side until it reached the neck. There, it began to nuzzle like it had never nuzzled before. The uh, results spoke for themselves. Hmm, that's Six insane. Oh, hold on. So this is just an emotional support blob, and it'll emotionally support anything. And it's just infinitely exuberant for some reason. Dude, I'm so happy that this exists. Oh my god. After when day breaks, I thought that the, this I would just continue to descend down a rabbit hole of madness. Holy moly, I'm happy this exists. 682 was grinning and chuckling, mm -hmm. repeating a phrase that the Foundation never would have imagined coming from 682. Feel so happy. Happy? Happy. 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 All right, we got it. We got it. Bro. Just when you thought. So, so this tickle monster just has the innate ability to make anyone happy. God, I wish I had a tickle monster in my life. God damn. SCP-999 couldn't possibly be more adorable. You learn about its greatest power, bringing joy. Anyone and anything that comes into contact with the creature, even in passing, will experience a kind of mild euphoria. As one's Dude, oh my god, I need this in my life. I literally need this in my life. What? Touch with the creature is prolonged. This overwhelming sense of joy increases and continues. I, I'm just waiting for the twist. I feel like there has to at some point be a twist. Long after you've separated. Like, how from. are you going to twist a euphoria inducing creature into something? Is there just no twist? Prolonged contact has completely cured depression, anxiety, and PTSD. <laughs> This is just a cure, a walking cure to depression? Along with a number of other conditions, rage and antisocial personality disorders. Serial killers practically become saints after coming into prolonged contact with 999. And oh my fucking god. In that moment, 682 was no exception. And there truly does not appear to be no exceptions. While causing happiness and joy isn't a dangerous weapon, when it comes to SCP-999, it is an extremely powerful one. And what's more, SCP-999 also appears to have an innate sense for those who need its help most. With a particular affection- Oh, what the frick? Why? This is incredibly wholesome. I don't understand. For the hurt and the unhappy, the creature appears to be a true altruist on a fundamental level, even risking its own safety to help humans during dangerous containment breaches. In one dramatic instance, 999 leaped into the air to block a bullet from making contact with a member of staff. As a result, the creature is pretty much universally loved by all members of Foundation right, staff. Let's go, baby. It's the one SCP who has never made trouble for anyone. That's Back insane! In SCP it literally just is wholesome! 682's containment cell, the beast was still smiling and laughing as 999 rubbed against its neck. It was an event so strange, hmm. so unprecedented, that the observers and attendants felt like they were hallucinating. Oh. For a few minutes, the monster kept dreamily repeating the word, happy. But then, suddenly, the creature began to enter a fit of uncontrollable, booming laughter. Oh it my. rolled onto its back, slamming its huge That's why it's called the Tickle Monster. It's his joy incarnate. I feel like this can be weaponized in some insane way. This is Joy Boy. Freaking Oda got high on SCP-999 when he was writing The Lord of One Piece. Anyone that has some sort of vendetta or vengeance or incredible grief some family member was just killed and they want to take revenge and this can literally stop that person from wanting to even take revenge this could erase grief tail against the door it had just fallen victim to one of 999's favorite pastimes tickling tickle fights hence how it earned its tickle monster nickname God among damn. staff the tickle fight continued until 682 appeared to tire and fall asleep with a smile still on its face 
After 15 minutes of inactivity, two D-Class personnel were commanded to enter and retrieve SCP-999 from the containment cell. They did so successfully, but as soon as 999 was removed, 682 roused from its slumber and released a powerful psychic attack from its entire body while laughing maniacally. It rendered all personnel within a certain distance oh incapacitated God. as they collapsed in fits of laughter, allowing 682 to escape and go on a violent rampage. It absorbed 999's ability to make people laugh. Man, I do love when an old dog learns new tricks. Let's go, baby! However, in spite of this, 999 showed no fear and helped save some of the bystanders as security officers subdued and recaptured 682. And even after all of this, 999 showed no hard feelings towards 682 and indicated a desire to play again. It's a creature whose capacity Dude. for love is so limitless that it's practically immune to fear. Which is all well and good, because the true enemy that 999 is destined to face is infinitely what? more powerful and terrifying what? than 682. What? How do you know this? Wait, huh? Who could ever hope to be? What is this monster? And why should 999 uh, have to face it someday? Okay. The answers to these questions all lie in the true origins of SCP-999. Oh boy, we got the entire lore breakdown before its origins d just to shock us. Available only to those with level 5 clearance and beyond. It's a perfect example of how something good can come from the darkest places. There would be no SCP-999 without SCP-231-7. Okay. SCP-231 was a collection one. of seven girls, all impregnated ah. by horrific nightmares in a ritual performed by a cult known as the Children of the Scarlet King. Everyone told me I had to see the Scarlet King. That's another SCP-001, right? A lot of people have been telling me I had to watch the Scarlet King. Oh God. Each of these girls, over the years that followed, gave birth to some of the most horrific monsters imaginable. One of which, according to some, was SCP-682. So the Scarlet King, which is basically Satan here, as far as I'm understanding, impregnated seven people. The, one of these seven gave birth to 682. So 682 is, a, is the son of Satan, or whatever, Scarlet King. These beings were manifested by the Scarlet King, a powerful interdimensional nightmare god believed to be behind a great deal of the darkness and horror present within our and many other dimensions. God, Foundation higher-ups have declared the Scarlet King to be the greatest existing threat to the multiverse at large. Holy crap! Satan's pull-out game week? Dude, this is, bros just live in there chilling in the nightosphere, casually wreaking havoc on every other universe. All right, we got to look into this. So are all the SCP-001s just these absolutely interdimensional existential threats? Like uh, when day breaks, it was horrifying. But I feel like Scarlet King is even more dangerous. And SCP-231 was his latest direct interaction with our universe. An entire SCP is classified as an SCP-231, and it's just an interaction the Scarlet King had with our universe. The only surviving member of SCP-231, SCP-231-7, gave birth in secret. But she didn't give birth to a monster. She gave birth to a- Tickle Monster really is canonically the son of the Scarlet King. SCP-999, a being of pure goodness. That's right. The nicest, kindest, cuddliest SCP of all oh is the direct God. descendant of a being that's essentially the dark god of all evil. Feel free to take a moment to absorb that. Oh my god, if that's not some sort of insane lesson about uh, how you are not defined by the sins of your fathers, I don't know what is. The creature even healed the girl who birthed it and allowed her to return to normal life with her family once more. It can heal people? What? From its first moments, SCP-999 SCP is just Raven from Teen Titans. <laughs> His father's Trigon. Nine was making positive changes huh. to the world around it. And according to ancient texts from a Scarlet King aligned culture known as the Deivas, SCP-999 is still very much in its infancy, yet it already has the power to pacify its monstrous siblings like the aforementioned 682. Wait, so 999 isn't just this little being of happiness that could be used as some sort of weapon. 999 could literally be some sort of messiah that could potentially even pacify the Scarlet King, the root of evil. Like, this is a baby, but... This is actually the hope for humanity in this universe. It's believed, according to some prophecies and Foundation theories, that the power of SCP-999 will grow exponentially as it matures. Okay. Why does this matter? 
Well, it's believed by some that one day, 999 will grow powerful enough to overthrow not only its own monstrous siblings, Bro, but the thought to Scarlet be King itself. unstoppable Scarlet King himself. <laughs> Dude, this is just Kirby Jesus, and uh, that's insane. Not through violence or hate, but through, but through the pure force of happiness and love burning out the darkness and purifying the corrupted. While the humble SCP-999 rarely outshines its frightening competitors, to those truly in the know, 999 is one of the most powerful and valuable SCPs in existence, and may Literally. be the greatest asset in the Foundation's arsenal for the war against dangerous anomalous activity. After all, what could strike more fear into their hearts than the knowledge that it might be love rather than firepower that finally dethrones the Scarlet King? And for the knowledge that it may one what day an insane episode. save everything we know from a fate so much worse than death, with nothing but affection for everyone and everything, it's worth offering thanks to the He's little- going to turn into Mr. Frundles from Rick and Morty, and it's all going to be so pog. Orange Blob, or at least an extra pack of M&Ms before bedtime. That was great! That was a good one, dude. I was getting, I was, I thought this was going to be boring. It's just a nice SCP, but suddenly there's so much weight on the shoulders of this little dude. God damn, palette is officially cleansed. I think my guess is next time we're doing Scarlet King. I don't know for sure what the next is. No promises, but I think Scarlet King's next. Leave a like, subscribe. See you next time. Like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. Stay weird, fam.